Hey, it's your Open Source Advocate, and I'm back with another video. This week I wanted to cover a couple of uh, really great utilities that you may or may not have heard of, and they're pretty useful, um, especially for IT professionals, people that like to do things uh, on their own, you know, the DIYers out there. Um, I'm one of those people. I love to do things on my own. There's some, some really great tools and things out there in the world, and the whole IoT thing is, is just, you know, getting there and, and, and really, you know, becoming huge, but you know part of my self hosted is that I want to self host things I don't really want to depend on a company and its services um, for for things like you know home security or my home cameras or things like that where people have access to those things all the time so first I would never have cameras inside my home um, but definitely on the outside of my home and I still don't want people to have access to those I don't want people who aren't me to have access to those things so being able to, to keep those kinds of um, home automation things separate from the rest of the world is, is really important to me. So recently I've been doing some different uh, projects and I've been trying to set up my uh, little Raspberry Pi Zero with a little camera attached to it as kind of a uh, standalone IP camera. And there's a lot of different solutions out there to do that and to host this yourself. So. Um, I may go over that once I'm a little bit more comfortable and familiar with the options. There's there's already lots of information out there if you're interested in that. But it's actually a pretty inexpensive solution. Uh, my goal is that I need a camera that's that's got Wi-Fi capability because I don't want to run cables from the inside to the outside of my house for Ethernet. Um, I also don't want to run power cables out to my camera because then when somebody comes along and snips it, uh, your camera's done. What What good did it do you? Um, I know there's there's Wi-Fi jammers and all kinds of things like that. My, my goal is also to have cameras that aren't so obvious that people kind of notice them. So um, it, it's really, for me, important to have something that is battery capable, that has a long battery life, and that has pretty decent resolution, the ability to send me notifications, and that can record information when, when events are, are triggered, you know, motion, that kind of stuff. And then again, you know, Wi-Fi capable. So I think the little Raspberry Pi Zero board, the wireless one, can do that in the camera. I'm still just looking into my options there. But one of the things that you have to kind of figure out and understand is when you set those up, so I'm setting them up basically quote unquote headless, which means there's no user interface. Um, you can plug them into a monitor, mouse and keyboard if you get all the right dongles and stuff. But, but that's not something I wanted to have to do, so there's some really good alternative options out there. So I, you can see on the screen, the first one I want to talk about is Angry IP Scanner. Um, this is an open source project. It works on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Um, so whenever you come to their main page, and I'll put links for all these things that I'm going to talk about down in the uh, description so that you can go to them and see their pages for yourself. Um, you can kind of read about what it does, but it's pretty basic and pretty straightforward. So I'll kind of tell you about what it does and then I'll show you what it does. Um, so there are screenshots. If you want to see screenshots of what it does and how it works and what it looks like, um, you can get an older version. I think that doesn't even require installation. It, it's a, um, kind of app that I can't remember what it's called, but you know, self enclosed app. So you can, a portable app. That's what it is. It's a portable app. So you can move it around. So I'm going to open up Angry IP Scanner here. And when it comes up, the interface is pretty bare. Uh, it does detect what your network settings are, and it kind of sets that up as your range. But you can narrow this down if you don't want to scan this entire range of IP addresses. Um, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't take that long. But you can adjust these things. So if you have different needs, you can set that up and adjust them. Um, so here this is just the host name for the machine that I'm on and then this just says netmask so you can go in here and kind of adjust the netmask to adjust how it scans and what it looks for I'm just gonna leave it where it is so the IP button here is, is how you select which network card it's going to scan on or which network interface so you can kind of go here and select again I'm not gonna pick any of these um, it automatically detects my wireless card, which is what I want, and my, and my main network, so that's fine. If you have a different need, you can come over here to IP range, and you can kind of expand this and see that you have some options here. So you can use a text file 
to kind of feed it IP addresses that you want it to scan. Um, so, so a few different things. So I've got this set to IP range. That's why it's giving me the range fields over here. As you change this, the interface will change. So if I go to text file, you can see that it wants me now to load up a text file. Um, if I go back up here to IP range, it loads right back to where it was. So the settings button here lets you set up a few other settings on the Angry IP scanner. So it can run different threads. So you can set up a delay between starting the threads. It just defaults to these things. I haven't messed with the defaults and it's worked fine. But just, just know that you can come in and adjust these if you need to. So the pinging methods, um, again, you can change this. So it does combine UDP, TCP, but there are other options in here if you wanted to use a different method for ping. Um, again, I just leave this on the default. I haven't really messed with these settings at all. I just want you to know that they are here and that you can change them. Um, so there's a ping timeout of two seconds, so it'll try to ping those addresses, and if it doesn't respond within two, two seconds, so this is 2,000 milliseconds, um, then, then it moves on. So if, you're, if you know you have a super low latency um, system, or super high latency system, I should say, that's going to take longer than two seconds to respond, you might want to increase this um, just so it gives it a little bit more time to get that done. You can check this box to scan dead hosts. Basically, these are hosts that... Um, for whatever reason don't respond to pings so a lot of times uh, especially IT administrators and IT professionals turn off the ability to ping a server um, it's intentionally done so if they know hey I've turned that off they can tell it to go ahead and try to scan that host anyways and it won't it won't rely on the ping to tell it hey it's there it'll just try to scan it and then again so skipping so this is on it tries to skip probably unassigned IP addresses um, this is based on kind of your network, and I think it, it does a little bit of smart stuff in the background to figure out how your network is set up. Again, I don't mess with these defaults right now. Ports. So if you're looking for things on certain ports, you can go here and actually adjust the ports that it's scanning on. Um, I have done this. So you can see here I've got this little comma separated list of values. So I'm looking specifically for things that respond on certain ports when it does a scan. So these are the ports that I use for little web servers and stuff like that. And then of course port 22 says they have SSH access. And when you do this scan, I'll show you in a minute, it actually tells you what ports it found open out of these things. And then you can sort by that so you can kind of find an interface that you might be looking for uh, more specifically. And then in display, so it, you can say, you know, display all hosts that it scanned, only the hosts that it found to be up and running and alive. Um, again, hosts with ports only open. And we'll come back and change this so you can kind of see the difference in the interface here in a minute. So nothing to do here. These would be labels that are displayed in the results list. There's nothing to be done there. So confirmation. Basically, this just says ask for confirmation before starting a new scan. So if you run a scan... It finishes and then you've got results on the screen and then you click to run a scan again. It's just going to ask you, like, are you sure you want to do that? Because it's going to get rid of the results you already have. And then it'll show the information dialog after the scan's finished. So you can turn both of these off. If that annoys you, just come in here and uncheck these boxes and hit OK and it'll be, it won't do that anymore. And then the, the language, so this is in English by default. It just goes from the system default. If you pick this, it's just letting you know that some language translations are not complete yet. So be aware of that. All right, we're going to hit OK on the settings. Now, I've got everything set up the way that I want it to run. I'm just going to click on the Start button. It's that simple. And you'll see it starts going through all of the IP addresses that I want it to scan in my network. And then it's going to start filling things in, and it goes pretty quick. And you can see all these ones that say NA. Um, if it says NA, it's basically saying, hey, I checked these things, and none of them gave me any signal back, so they don't seem to be there. And that means that, that two seconds expired and it didn't get anything. So here's that pop-up. So if you don't like this, you can go in there and uncheck that box that says show it at the end of the scan. I don't mind. Now you see there's not a lot here and I can scroll and then you see here's something. So here's something that has port 22 open and it's this machine that I'm on. You know, if we keep going down, here's some more stuff and they have more ports. Um, but this isn't the best way to look at it. So if you go up here and click on the header of the uh, column, you can say sort by this column, and now I've got all the NAs down below, and I can see all of the different devices and machines that it found on the network with this scan. And then I can go and select those things, and I can look and see what the IP address is. So the whole purpose here is that I wanted to find the Raspberry Pi 0W that I set up, 
and it got a DHCP address the first time because the way you have to set it up is kind of in a headless way. So you have to put a config file into a certain folder for the first boot up and then you can find it and see it. So that's how it connects. There's no Ethernet port on those things. It's just, that's it, Wi-Fi. Um, so what I want to look for is the specific name for that device. In this case, it's, it's this one here, um, the one that says Motion I1. And basically, there's the IP address. So it's really easy for me to kind of jump in here, run that scan, and find what I'm looking for, and there's the IP address. I don't always remember the IP addresses. You can, of course, set up Etsy host files so that everything falls into your host file, and you can just identify things by name. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do, but when you have a new device and you don't get to immediately pick that IP address, something like Angry IP Scanner can be a really great tool. Or if you're an IT professional and you're going out to someone's you know, network that you're working on and you're not familiar with that network, again, this could be a really cool, great tool that you can use to find out some information about that network, what devices are on it, what they're running, what ports are open. So you can just tell it to scan for all open ports, I believe, as well. But um, this is kind of what you get whenever you tell it, here's the ports that I'm interested in. So if we go back into the settings and we say, I only want to see the live hosts we click OK. So I'm going to hit start and it's going to prompt me because I have that setting turned on. So yes, I want to rerun the scan. So you can see here now it's not filling up the screen with everything that is scanning. It's only giving me back the things where it finds a live host. So I don't get that whole full set of devices that I have to go filter through. Instead, it's saying, hey, I found these things. Here they are. Um, you know, now figure out what to do with them. So as soon as this thing finishes, it's going to pop up the message. And we can kind of scan, we can just scroll right here just a little bit, and you can see there's only so many devices out here. Now, it found some of these things, but they don't have any information. They don't have any host names, they don't have any uh, ports open, things like that, that it can find when it scans them. This could be any kind of device out here on the network. I mean, it could be, you know, smart TVs or Apple TVs or smart devices or who knows what. Um, but again, if you want to sort, you just click on this and it'll move all the NAs down to the bottom. If you're like, you know what, I want to see all the things that have ports open, just click on the other side and do that. And it'll show you all the ones with ports open and you can see what they are and kind of go look at the IP addresses for them. So it's a nice readout. It's a really simple tool. Um, it's easy to install. It doesn't take any effort whatsoever to install this thing. So um, in fact, I think it was just a Debian package in my case. I'm on Ubuntu. So I went to the site and let's see, there's download. And when you say Linux, it just tells you, here you go, here's some different ways that you can do this. And in this case, there's a Debian package, an RPM package, um, a different Debian package for if you have 32-bit and the same thing for if you have 32-bit uh, RPMs. So if you have Mac, it just tells you go get this and run it and then Windows it's an executable that you go get so there's options for anybody depending on the system that you're using um, and if you want the source code you can go get the source code as well so this is a really great tool I just wanted to show this one real quick now I want to move to the one called nmap and and honestly angry IP scanner may be using nmap in the background I don't know um, but nmap is a really awesome tool as well if you've never tried nmap it's pretty cool out of the box, it's actually a command line utility. So I'm going to bring up the terminal. And to install it, you just do sudo apt install nmap. And it will install. And this is, of course, on a Ubuntu system. So you would type in your sudo credentials. And in this case, it's going to tell me it's already installed. I don't, I don't have anything to install. But if it wasn't, it would go through and it would ask you, are you sure you want to install this? You hit Y and you, you get it done. It's really very basic to install this thing. So when you want to scan, you can do nmap, and then there's a bunch of options. So as with anything in the terminal, and, and I talk about this um, rarely, honestly, but anytime, because <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm a Linux user, but I'm a Linux user who wants to have the click, clicky clicky of Windows. Um, if I'm running a headless server out on DigitalOcean, I don't mind using the shell whatsoever. It's no problem. But there are great things like Webmin um, that will give you a graphical user interface to do a lot of stuff. So I appreciate all of the developers out there that work to make a nice graphical user interface. Even if it's just running something that's actually a 
shell-based application in the background. That's probably 99% of what Linux is. So, um, one, I appreciate it. Two, I hope you do too. But I do want to show you the basics behind Nmap, and then we'll kind of look at their official graphical user interface called ZenMap. Um, so first we'll do Nmap. So you can do man and then Nmap. So on any Unix Linux system, you can do this, and it's going to give you the manual, basically, for what it is you just requested. And once you get in here, you just use your down arrow keys to scroll through the information, and it will tell you all about it. So you can see there's a nice uh, man uh, page here. And as we scroll down, you can see just all kinds of different information about this thing. And if you keep going, you'll eventually get into all of the different options you can use whenever you run the nmap command. So you have input file names, you have just so much stuff. So last scan, you know, last uh, ping scan, all, all kinds of things. So basically host discovery information here. So like dash s n is going to be disable a port scan. So when you ping, don't scan the ports, just ping it and tell me if it's there and that's it. Um, same thing with like list targets to scan, so that dash s capital L. In that case you would then give it a list of target IP addresses that you want scanned specifically. You wouldn't just give it an open range. So you can just kind of go down, you can read all these things and, and it gives you a little bit of information about what this is. Um, so there's lots and lots and lots of options. Nmap is an extremely powerful tool and there's a lot of stuff that you can do with it to get the different information out of it. So one of the things I'm doing with it is on the vector project that I made for the server side WireGuard user interface um, out there on GitHub. I actually install Nmap whenever you run the install script and I use Nmap whenever you start up the vector server and if you say yes I want to check and see if this particular client interface is online from the server then I use Nmap and I'm using Nmap to basically say go scan all of the IP addresses for this network um, and I don't even say go scan all the IP addresses for this network I actually go grab the IP addresses out of a database that say you have clients that are on those addresses and I go scan those clients and I say is it up or down? Is it online or offline? And there's just a command line command that, that runs that to say, here's all the ones that I found online. I take those, I run back through it, and I update the status. And I run that about every two minutes. So it's not something that's running all the time. It's not live time update. It'll t you know, it could be anywhere from right as soon as you click the button because you hit it at the right time to two minutes after you take a system on or offline. But um, Nmap is, is really awesome. It can do so many different things and when you combine that with the rest of the power of Bash you can do a lot of really great stuff with it. So when you want to get out of the uh, man page you just hit Q on the keyboard and it takes you back out. And then if you want to do Nmap you can do Nmap. Um, we'll do dash S N in this case just to kind of show it. And I'll do my network here at home dot seven and then dot star slash and we'll do 24. In fact we'll do 20. Um, and we'll just kind of let it run. So it's going to start up. It tells you a little bit of information. It's going to start running. It's going to scan my addresses. This is going to take just a minute because it does go out and do some stuff. Um, but it should just be doing a ping without a port scan. And this will come back. And in a minute, it's going to give us a big list of information that you can scroll back through and kind of see what all it got. But it's very similar to what you get with Angry IP Scanner, except it's got... Uh, a lot more uh, information that comes up and is available from it. Alright, so then it just blasted everything onto the screen here so that you can kind of see what it what it found. Um, so it does only list, I think, yes. So you can see it kind of skips because it's only listing devices that have an IP address. So it tells you, you know, here's the scan report for these for this IP address, here's the latency. So you can kind of go through and see this thing. And again, I'm not scanning for open ports or anything. Um, of course, this is the machine I'm on, so it gives you the host name. It can uh, occasionally give you host names back. It doesn't always give you host names back. In fact, I haven't had a lot of luck with it giving me host names back, but uh, it, it apparently it can do that. 
So here it found a couple of things on 192.168.12 and .11. Um, don't, don't know what those are. But here we kind of finish. So this is one of my, uh, one of my, this is, these are my desk phones that I have that are IP phones. So yeah, there you go. Um, so InMap is, is pretty cool. So I think we can do some more cool stuff with InMap. Let's see what else we can come up with. Okay, I have this command typed in right down here at the bottom, and it is nmap dash dash top dash ports, and then 20, and then 192.168.7.178. This is one of my uh, laptops that's outside running in my office. So basically, I'm going to run and see what it finds for any ports. So that was <laughs> very quick, and you can see here that it says port 21 closed, port 22 open. So it tells you what the port is, what the port number is, whether it's TCP or UDP, and then whether it's closed or open. I mean, that was really fast. That's that's kind of awesome. So if you're trying to really figure out something about what are your access points for a certain system, this is a really cool tool. All right, so one other thing you should realize is that for certain scans in InMap, you do have to use pseudo privileges. So if you try to do a scan that requires that, it'll tell you in the terminal, like, hey, it looks like you're trying to do something that requires root. In that case, just do sudo, then the same command, and then put in your password, and it will start running. So now we're going to talk about ZenMap. So I'm going to go and open up ZenMap. And I want you to notice, I think you can see this, that up here there's ZenMap, and then there's ZenMap as root. So there's a reason for this, and again, I just talked about it. Sometimes when you run things with nmap, you have to have root privileges to do that. So if you open just zenmap without the as root, it's not going to have the privileges that you need to run everything you might want to. So it's better to open this one, and then it's going to prompt for your password. And then it'll open it up, and you'll have kind of full root access. So this is the nmap graphical user interface. Um, so again, if I want to just do 192.168.7.star, I think we can do that. And it's set to intense scan, so you've got a lot of options here. We, we probably don't want to do an intense scan in this case because we want to make it time efficient. So let's try a quick scan plus. We'll see what that does. And here it gives you the command that it's going to run, which is kind of nice. So you can actually learn the command line commands as you go to kind of understand what's happening in the background. So here it's going to put the output that you would normally see in the terminal in this window. Okay, that failed, but maybe because I had the star. Let's try this again with an actual IP address. We'll see what happens. So while that's running here across the top, you'll see there's some other um, tabs that you can see some information once it completes. So it looked like it ran the scan. So here if we go look at our ports, we can see what's going on. We've got one that says 22 TCP open SSH. And then we've got another one that says 5000 TCP open for SIP. So this is kind of a cool feature. Um, we'll close that for a second. When you go to topology, you can actually kind of see, and it's going to try to figure out kind of how does your network look. So if you have a fairly complex network, that might be an interesting thing to see because you could have multiple jumps and multiple routers and different um, IP addresses and different networks kind of set up within your network. And seeing that topology is pretty nice kind of feature. And again, if you're an IT professional going out to a client site and you're trying to understand the network topology, this is a really, really nice feature, actually. So you get some host detail information here. Okay, now we've got a little bit of information here. We can see a lot of information about a lot of different hosts that it went out and scanned. And here's the topology of my network. So this is kind of interesting. I can click and I can kind of see that expand. That's really awesome, actually. 
So as you do this, you can kind of see what your network looks like and what your devices on that network are looking like and kind of where they're at and what's going on. So here's a couple of red. So this is interesting. That's an interesting view. So here you've got some controls. Okay, so I like this. I can zoom in on this network topology. Um, for me, with my terrible eyes, that's really awesome. So I have a fairly boring network. You can see it's all centered around a single network hub. Um, I'd love to see this on something that's a little bit more complex. I just don't have something that I can show that to you with, but this is actually really, really nice. So it'd be nice if you could double-click this and have the information pop up over here. So again, host details, depending on what you click on, you may get more information than others. We just did the quick scan. We didn't do an actual deeper scan this time. So if we do quick traverse, let's see what that looks like. Oh, well, that was really fast. Okay, nice. And then here we get topology again. So a little bit different looking, very interesting. Some of these have larger, um, I don't know if that's bandwidth, ping times maybe. That's really interesting. Oh, here we go, here's the legend for the uh, chart. Oh, very nice, okay. It tells you what all this stuff means, that's cool. So missing a trace route, no trace route, primary trace route. Okay, so this is nice. This is a nice thing. Um, so it does give you a legend, so you can look at this and kind of see what all these different things mean. <laughs> so I like this. Okay, so red is a host with more than six open ports. So 58. Let's go find 58 in this list. right here. Let's go look at host details. Yeah, okay, so we have FTP, we have uh, FTP, we have secure shell port, we have port 80, port 443, uh, 515, 631, and 9100. So, if you're trying to secure up systems around your around your home network or around your business network or anybody else's network, this is actually really super useful. And then when you look at that topology and it has that, that chart for you, that can really help you go through and say, what are these ports for? What is this thing doing? Now, you need to, of course, identify this particular device. Um, but again, this combined with Angry IP Scanner, I think you could really really have some great tools here for identifying network issues or potential network issues and places where you could shore it up. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you real quick is what I'm doing when I say I use the Angry IP Scanner to find that IP. So I've run it and I go here and I sort and I find my motion camera IP address and it's 202. So I'm going to go to my browser and I'm going to type in 192.168.7.202. And you can see that's going to load up, and this is running this software on this little Raspberry Pi Zero. And I'll do a, a video on this later. Um, and that's going to load up, and then here's my video. And you can see that was very easy for me to find. I didn't have to go do a bunch of work to figure out what the IP address is. I didn't have to connect it to an external monitor. I didn't have to hook up Ethernet. I didn't have to connect a keyboard and mouse, none of that stuff. So that... Angry IP Scanner really made it worth it. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this. hope you get a lot out of these tools. They'll, they'll come in handy in the future for a lot of the projects that I'm looking at doing. Um, if you have questions, if you have thoughts, if you have other great tools like this, let me know. Leave a comment. Uh, leave a message. Contact me. Um, I've, I've had some really great contact with a few of you so far, and I appreciate it. Um, keep it up. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, like it and subscribe and share it with your friends. And until next week.